In this video, I'm going to talk about student syndrome and Parkinson law. Uh, see, my students used to pass the PMP exam on a daily basis and what I normally do after my students pass, I used to have a one-to-one -one discussion with them to understand their exam experience and also to understand the current trend of the PMP exam. You know what? What I learned from my students recently who passed the PMP exam, all my students unanimously said Gautam for the current PMP exam, the understanding of concept behind student syndrome and Parkinson law is very important. That is the reason I have decided to make a video on student syndrome and Parkinson law. Most importantly, at the end of the video, I am going to conduct a test and with that, I will be evaluating whether you guys have really understood the concept behind student syndrome and Parkinson law. Trust me, there is a high probability that you may find a similar question in the actual PMP exam. Hey guys, my name is Gautam Sutakar. I'm working as head of training department with EDU HubSpot. Now, let's start discussing student syndrome. Let's start with definition first. Student syndrome is a planned procrastination, which is doing things at the last responsible moment. You all know I'm not a definition guy. So what I normally used to do is if I want to teach a PMP concept, I used to connect a definition with a practical example. Now let's take a practical example and let's try to understand the definition of student syndrome, which I have given now. Uh, you know, few weeks before on a fine Sunday, I had a task to do. The task was I want to drop my motorcycle to the service station. The due date of this task is 4 p.m. The due date or due time for this task is 4 p.m. The reason being is by 4 p.m the service station will be closed. This means on that Sunday, I want to drop my motorcycle within 4 p.m. You know what I did? Since it was a Sunday, I was just woke up very late. I was just relaxing and chilling with a beer and I started myself to do the work on this task by 3.30 p.m. Why I started to do the work on this task by 3.30 p.m.? Because in order to drop my motorcycle from my home, to the service station, it will take 30 minutes. So I applied myself on this task at the last responsible moment. You know what happened? I just started my bike. I just went on the streets. I got struck with traffic. By the time I was reaching the service station, it was 4.15 PM. The service station is already closed. I couldn't able to complete my task. So why I couldn't able to complete the task on time? Because I showed the student syndrome behavior. I applied myself at the last responsible moment on the task, which is dropping my motorcycle to the service station. And because of that, I missed my deadline. See, the student syndrome is something you have to avoid on your real project as well. Let's assume that you have estimated an activity on your project for 10 days. Now let's make an assumption you are starting applying yourself on this activity by 8th day or 9th day. What will happen? Due to some unforeseen issues, you will miss the deadline. There is a high probability you will miss the deadline. Or what will happen when you are doing things at the last responsible moment? You will do multitasking and because of that, quality issues can happen. So kindly avoid student syndrome on your real project world. Now let's talk about Parkinson law. Let's start with the definition. The definition of Parkinson law is work expands for the period of time available for its completion. You know very well, I'm not a definition guy. So let's take a practical example and let's try to connect that practical example with the definition of Parkinson law. So you know what happened to me on Sunday because of student syndrome, I could not able to deliver my motorcycle to the service station. On the following Sunday, I have decided, okay, at any cost, I want to complete this task, which is delivering my motorcycle to the service station. And you know what I did? On the following Sunday, I woke up early in the morning by 10 a.m. Don't judge me. I'm saying 10 a.m. is early in the morning. Trust me, guys, for me, Sunday, I used to sleep nicely. 10 a.m. is really early for me. So I woke up by 10 a.m. I completed all my morning routines by 10.30 a.m and I started my work on this activity by 10.30 a.m. 
This means by 10.30 a.m. I took my motorcycle from my home and I was heading towards the service station. By 11 a.m. I reached the service station. I reached the door of the service station. After that I realized, you know what, I have time until 4 p.m. to deliver my bike to the service station. Then I reduced my effort on this work. I didn't deliver my bike to the service station. Then what I was doing near to the service station, I have my lot of my friends home. So I was visiting all my friends home and exactly by 4 p.m. I delivered my bike to the service station. Means I delivered my motorcycle to the service station. So what happened in this situation guys? Initially the effort on the work was higher from my side. This means by 10.30 a.m. I started my motorcycle and by 11 a.m. I reached the door of the service station. But later I realized you know, I have time until 4 p.m. Then I myself reduced the work on that particular task. I was just roaming around all my friends home and exactly by the due date or due time by 4 p.m. I delivered my bike to the service station. So what happened here? I expanded my work to fill the period of time available for its completion. And this is Parkinson law. See, on your project, you guys have to avoid Parkinson law as well. For example, you have estimated an activity to 10 days. Consider in first or second day itself, you have completed the majority of the work on the activity. Don't extend that work on the activity until 10th day. It's okay to complete an activity earlier, right? So that you can save some time on your project. So kindly avoid Parkinson law on your project. Now it's a time to conduct test. You will be seeing couple of scenarios on my screen. Scenario number one and scenario number two. The same scenarios will be listed in the description as well. So what I want you guys to do is please let me know in the chat which scenario is Parkinson law and which scenario is student syndrome. And just don't say that Gautam scenario one is Parkinson law, scenario two is student syndrome. Please provide me a reasoning in the chat. I really want to see the reasoning. And then trust me, I will be replying to each and every comments which you guys are giving. And in the comments, I will be revealing the right choices as well. So I'm eagerly looking forward to your answers. If you guys feel like you have understood the concept behind student syndrome and Parkinson law never liked before, please hit the like button. And most importantly, please subscribe to our channel. So this is completely for the benefits of you. The reason behind that is moving forward, I'm going to come up with a lot of PMP content related videos and the content related to general project management. So when you are subscribing our channel, definitely you will be getting a notification and you can make use of these videos. I hope you guys have enjoyed this video and I will be soon meeting you all in an another great video. Until then, bye.